is Billy Mira from the MMA Fight Corner on UFC Radio, and I'm sitting here with Jesse and Ryan from 10 years at the Ainsworth here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. What's going on, guys? Uh, just hanging out in Las Vegas. Yep. We have a good time tonight. Now, I, I'm sorry that I asked you guys to come to a bar. I mean, you guys even drink? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got to have liquid confidence. Every, it, as much as we do this for a living, Night in and night out, five nights a week. I still get the, the pre-show jitters, so I have to have a couple drinks to take that edge off. That's right. What is it? Carson and all the talk show guys used to say, if you're not nervous before a show, that means you ain't doing your job. Yeah, that makes total sense, yeah. So that's it. Where are all the drinks coming in, man? <laughs> but uh, seriously, you guys are on tour right now, right? Yeah, yeah. We're on tour for a couple more weeks. Then we get to go to, to Russia for like a week or so, which we've never been to Russia. That'll be pretty insane, so... You guys must be stoked to go to Russia. Yeah, man. It's uh, we've I've been all over the world. I've been to a lot of places, but not Russia. So I can check that one off the list. Yeah. <laughs> you can check that one off the bucket list. Yeah. You you stoked or what? Oh yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see it all. So now, since the release of Minus the Machine, how have the the uh, the show has been going? You know, man. It's the entertainment business has a lot of crazy ups and downs with success, and sometimes it's tough to deal with especially the mainstream industry and, and, and downloads and all that stuff happening. It's, it's success is measured on a much smaller level, but we felt like after we got on an independent label and released Minus the Machine that this feels more stable than it's ever felt. Like, instead of these big big rises and falls, like, it's been more consistently stable. So that's, at least that's exciting for us. So this move was a conscious decision by the band, basically, to make a switch over from the indie la- uh, from the major label and go over to the indie label and probably have a lot more creative control over your product, over, over your album. Yeah, definitely. One, 100%. That's, that's what was happening is the label that we were with, um, we, don't have, we have no hard f- feelings with the label that we were with. Uh, you know, they got us to a point, but they really wanted us to keep up with, with what was current, and we just wanted to be ourselves, and we felt like... We were happy with our careers at the level it was being ourselves. We've got really loyal fans and stuff, so they were fine, and they let us out of the contract, and we couldn't be happier with, with our current situation. Right, right. Now, um, you know, forget what the critics say, because I always say screw the critics, yeah. you know, and all the, some of the best rock albums over the years have been, you know, bashed by the critics over the years. Uh, what's been the fan reaction so far since the release of the album? Um across the board all the fans can really tell that um we had 100 percent freedom to, to, to create and tear apart songs and re- reconstruct them and um the album prior to this one was called feeding the wolves and it was the most constricted we'd ever felt it was very self-explanatory the title and um it was that's when we got to a point where our backs were against the wall and we were like i can't do this anymore it's i want to i did this started creating music for the freedom of it and we have the freedom back, and the fans are really receiving it well. And they, they say it sounds more like our earlier albums. They can tell that the continuity is throughout the whole album instead of just one song. Yeah. Right, right. Now, it's funny. You mentioned the album uh, Feeding the Wolves, and you have a, a video for a song called Fix Me on there. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to give a little suggestion. What if, with your new, you know, the, the new direction the band is taking, what if you actually assume the role of the, the band that you play in the video <laughs> and actually came out and just changed your whole image to being that band? You know, uh, it took me a long time to be comfortable in my own skin as a, as a front man, so I do a lot of weird costume changes. I've worn dresses on stage. Um, I've done a lot just to switch it up. To it, It's easier to go into an alter ego and, and be an entertainer. It's almost an, like that Andy Kaufman thing where... If you get into a character and you stay in that character, you can do whatever you want. And um, they, I, I do that a lot, and it was really fun with that video. We were we were sick and tired of, of them always trying to make us be so serious, and they said the label was like, well, you guys need to lighten up and be a little more lighthearted. So we went full goofy, and then they didn't like that. So it's like, okay, you don't want us to be too serious. You don't want us to be too goofy. You want us just to be safe. Well, s- well screw you. We're wearing mullets and mustaches, and we're just going to make like a Foo Fighters video. Yeah, I thought it was a, a great thing. I was like, this is awesome. I was cracking up watching that. It was a real great throwback video. Is, is the image something, you know, that you guys think of at all? Or is that kind of like, you know, a, a lot of people say, ah, it's secondary. But is it something you consciously think of at all? Um, I mean, I think, you have to be, I think you have to be a little bit conscious of it, you know. But I, this, this is, the, I think, the type of band. It's just, it's not like the most important just to have that yeah. whole thing going on, you know. I, th- I think that it's, it's definitely... You, you want to get up there and 
for us to, to be doing it since 2004, you, you've got to be in physical shape to just keep doing it over all the years. So I try to take care of myself with that. But when it comes to, like, branding a fashion, a lot of other bands have done it, like Five Finger and stuff. And it's a, it's a brilliant move, but we never really did that we never felt like going that direction we were just sort of ourselves because all of us individually as, in, as band members have different tastes and different styles and we didn't want to like try to do a whole like band look thing we, we thought we'd just let people judge us however they wanted so the, the fashion thing is just if you like what we wear it's just just what we wear every day <laughs> well, i'm only asking on you know for the girls not for myself of course just want to clarify all the girls want is me to just take my shirt off i started i did it a while back i used to paint and write on myself and like now i do normal stuff and they're like take your shirt off i'm like man <laughs> jesse can you can you paint yourself for me yeah, i mean yeah it's it's like now i feel like a piece of meat <laughs> hey what's what it could be worse man you could be working a regular job somewhere oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely know, be a struggling musician still but you know i and you guys have done some pretty cool things with your career especially touring getting to record a few albums and 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 do that a lot of a lot of bands out there aspire to do that but not only that you guys have been able to work with some of the biggest names in the industry yeah. um I'm a big music fan and also a big STP fan. What was it work? Oh, what was it like man. working with Dean DeLeon? Dean DeLeo was a breath of fresh air in this music industry because we've worked with a lot of big name producers. We work with a lot of people, and I'm not going to mention any negative n- names negatively because it's all behind us. But DeLeo was one of the, the best experiences we've ever had. He was just a laid back dude and. He didn't come into it like we got to write a hit, we got to do this. He just came in and was like, let's just jam. We're all musicians. Let's get in a room and just jam together. And um, we came out on the other side with a pretty cool song. And it was just, we're trying not to be giddy little high school kids going, oh, my God, this is Dean DeLeos. But it, he, he doesn't like to, you don't want to tell tell somebody, oh, my God, you're my idol and this or that. You, they want to just be treated normal. So it's, that's how you usually can really get like in- intimate with him is just treat him normal and he he was a cool dude wow same to you <laughs> uh i wasn't really there at that he point, wasn't actually. there at that <laughs> one it was just an, it was two of us that had gone and um he's he's currently not he's in the chilling out right now but um a couple of years ago a few years back i was able to i got the honor to sing in a band that i listened to growing up uh for years and it was a great experience. It was awesome. It was something off my bucket list. Um, if you guys could pull yourself out of 10 years um, and there was one band that somebody said, it's your bucket list that you could sing in, what band would that be? Man, I, re- I really don't know because I was, I get very nervous. My hands get, my hand, hands are sweating thinking about it. I get nervous trying to fill somebody else's shoes. I can do what I do well, but filling someone else's shoes is just, it's scary to me. But that being said, I have been fortunate enough to be put in situations where I was allowed to sing with, with bands I looked up to. And one of the most memorable experiences was, um, hu- I'm a huge Deftones fan, and we did a, a Family Values tour with them back in 06, and they have a song called Passenger that... Um, I was too nervous to ever ask him, you know, I can do that, I can do that. And But our other guitar player got to be friends with uh, Steph, their guitar player, and it never happened that tour, and then we were out in Seattle recording an album, and they had us come out to watch them. They were just tra- passing through playing a show. Like, why don't you come out and watch us? And we were out, I was some standing side stage, just randomly met up with them again. I haven't seen them in a while. And the song starts, and Chino just goes like this, and I'm like, now you're gonna do this to me now i'm not ready i'm not warm you know like and i got out to go out on on stage and sing on uh chi which is he had a bad accident but um i it was that long ago i got to sing on chi's mic and and sing passenger with the deftones and that was just like it's it's crazy to think that i did that bro you hit your bucket list so yeah it's definitely bucket list for sure for sure oh, wow. watch listening to ufc radio i'm sitting here with the band 10 years um I heard a little rumor that you guys are big UFC fans. Is that true? Um, yeah, I mean, I I love watching. I mean, it's there's so much skill to it and everything, but it's just fun watching people beat the hell out of each other. But yeah, I always watch it, and I'll watch all the different, you know, the, the lower fights and stuff. But when you get some of these bigger ones coming up, well matched ones, man, he 
he he knows more of it even than I do. He keeps I me try. up to date. Here, brother. Come on. I, I try, you know. I, I don't. Me up I don't know as much, you know, as a Some lot of people. A lot, yeah, as a lot of people. But you know, when you're on the road, and I know there's a fight coming up. I want to see it, you know. And, and and this has kind of been more recent for me too. To like really, I mean, I don't know. We enjoy just if we get a hold of a way to watch it, you know. Yeah, I try to go to the local bar that's showing it or whatever, and just and watch it because it's. I think that it's the the evolution of boxing and back in the day when you think of Tyson and all that stuff how exciting those fights were that UFC has now managed to, to take it to the next step and with some of these fights and it's a big thing the whole world watches because it's, it's extremely entertaining high energy right now how long so how, how far back did you were, did you guys become fans and was there any one particular fight or event that just sucked you in you know a long I'll be honest a long time ago I watched Tank Abbott just come in and just pound the hell out of people. My man just went old school. <laughs> and I mean, every you you can only have a so long of a shelf life in a fighting career. They, they it's a revolving door. But just watching him come in, just a bar bruiser like that, and just take his teeth out and come in swinging was he was entertaining to watch. But now it's the sports evolved so much that like people like Jones and some of these people are just incredible. They're, they're incredible athletes. You're looking at the new form of mixed martial the really the true mixed martial artist. The era that you're talking about is when it was like discipline against discipline. At down, just people, yeah. yeah, anybody could get in the ring, and it was, it was nasty. It was a little more, the, the rules had to change a little bit because people were getting hurt. But, um, yeah, it was, I went back that far with it. Yeah, I think in those days some of the rules were uh, you couldn't get into the ring, uh, you couldn't bring a knife, and you couldn't bring a gun, and there was no eye gouging or something yeah, like that. Eye gouging and, and nut kicking was about the only thing. I think that was it. Now, I heard a rumor that one of you guys actually trains at MMA, or is it jiu-jitsu? Um, no, the, our other guy, he did it for a second, and he came back going, Oh, my God, I have a whole new respect for these people. He only did it for like a month, and he said he was just throw up every time after every training. And he's like, that's just nuts. I'm not, I, don't have, I don't think I have the temperament to, to fight. Because you're supposed to fight out of skill and not let emotion get in the way. And if you get punched in the face, I can't control. I mean, I just, I'm not a fighter. I don't like fighting. I just like watching it. But I, I do. my extreme sport is I, I've been skateboarding forever, but I'm not an MMA trainer or anything. So you're saying that, you know, it'd be very hard to go in there and think tactically when somebody's punching you in the face. Like, hey, whoa, how do I get the emotion out of this? We have bad shows on stage sometimes. I mess up a note singing here and there. and But you still come off stage and people still are like, dude, you were great, whatever. But, like, to have a bad day and a fight, <laughs> like this fight you've been training for for six months to a year and just get pummeled and you know it's happening and it's televised, that's just got to bring you down. you got to have a strong will to get back, get back up and do it again. Oh, absolutely. I tell people all the time they don't realize what, the, what it is that these athletes are going through. You know, they think that it's – they look at it, uh, if they briefly watch it, they think it's just a, two guys in the ring, you know, beating each other up, which couldn't be any further from the truth. These guys are spending hours and hours and months and months in the gym training, not only a discipline, but also then how to combine all of those disciplines, boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, this, eye poking, yeah. you know, uh, little tricks, some salt in the face, you know, whatever it is, and they're combining it into, like we said, what we know now is MMA. And when your friend tried it for a while, he came out. And he got the you know the harsh reality of what it really takes to get inside that octagon. He really, like he never actually had a professional fight. I mean, he never really fought. He just trained. He just went through. There's a lot of training camps that you can just exercise programs, and that's pretty much the way he was treating it. And he was like, it takes a different breed of a person to actually take it from the training aspect because anybody can train. There's a lot of fitness programs that teach that way, but to take that and actually apply it to a career and really fight, it's a different breed. It looks a lot different. Like as soon as that octagon closes and you're in there and across from somebody else who just wants to do nothing but put a hurting on you, it's a completely, completely I different that feeling. I mean, I guess people could say that too with like, what's it feel like to step on stage with thousands of people in front of you? And for me, in that type of thing, you just sort of, there's the nerves and the butterflies all the way up until the, the point of go time. And when it's go time, it's all gone. So maybe that's the way they feel, too, because when it's go time for us on stage, it's like everything you're used to, everything you've trained for, everything we've rehearsed in the band. And if there's 
10 people or 10,000 people, it's sort of just you to really have a good show, you got to block all that out and just have a good show. Right now, UFC 158 is coming up. That's headlining George St. Pierre and Nick Diaz uh, going toe to toe. You have any thoughts on this upcoming fight card? He said it best, and I agree with him. We, we're sort of confused on how Diaz got this slot because he lost his last fight, didn't he? To, to Carlos Condit, and then and then he was out for a while. Yeah, and then he was out for a while because he was suspended uh, for the marijuana metabolites thing. You know, and his uh, drug test came back uh, positive. So, but yeah, but now he's back after a long layoff. And, and you're right. Did he talk his way into this fight? I think he ran his mouth to the point where uh, St. Pierre just wants to kill him. Because you never hear St. Pierre talk like this. And that's the way they're hyping it. And it's sort of a good, it, they're, they're taking a page out of the old Tyson days, you know, the Don King days. Where if you get people, you make it sound personal and you get the world watching that way, it's... It's way more entertaining, you know? Right, exactly. This is the one time that George St. Pierre says, this time it's personal. It's one of those fights I want. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you don't know the dark place I come from. Yeah, and I think that he, the guy really he talked his way into it. And he's a great fighter, but St. Pierre, man, that guy, he's something else. I don't know if, he, if, I don't know if the other guy has a chance, all honesty. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a real good fight. Any thoughts on that fight? Uh, I, I think GSP is going to just whoop him. That's what I think. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong, you know. Yeah, but any, I, Anything can happen. Yeah. Any, I mean, you can get caught. In, or Anything can happen. But he just, I think Diaz is a little more anger-driven, you know, or, or like, and, and Diaz, uh, GPS, or St. Pierre, why I'm fucking brain fire. St. Pierre, uh, he's, he just, he's always calm and collective when you see him in the ring. He never seems like he's losing his composure. He's always composed and it's it's impressive. Now his first fight back was a few months ago, uh, and he faced Carlos Condit. Naturally, got through Condit, and now Condit on that same fight card in the co-main event is facing uh, Johnny Hendricks. Johnny Hendricks get through gets through this fight, and he's able to get through Carlos. He's going to successfully, hopefully, get a title shot at George St. Pierre. Yeah. Uh, you guys, is that something you'd like to see? Oh yeah, man, it's cool to see how they all just climb up, and and then like. You think that you watch them climb up and they just get this groove going and they get to the top and then out of nowhere someone else comes and takes them out. Like it's Jones my, by far is my favorite though. No one has touched this guy. I mean, he's he's just incredible. That's I want to see Jones and uh, Silva. Yeah. <laughs> Every the whole world wants to see that one. Well, I think the next fight that has been announced is Anderson Silva is going to be facing Chris Weidman. Uh, and that is, that's a fight I've actually been waiting for. I know it's not such a popular fight. You guys have a look on your face like, what? I'm not, but, I'm not familiar with Weidman. Yeah, Chris Weidman, he's a fighter out of uh, Long Island. He was a big wrestling star. Came in and just really took to the sport. They're almost calling him an up-and-coming John Jones at this point. Uh, he's, he's coming off of a shoulder injury, but that's a fight I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully after that, depending on who wins, I'd love to see a John Jones. Let's say it is. Uh, Anderson Silva gets through Chris Weidman. Regardless, I'd still love to see the both of them fight. John Jones, you know, even though they're two different weight divisions. Yeah, yeah, I know, but they're just those two are the ones that have that name of. I mean, and they're they're undefeated, you know. Like that's that's something where you take the best of the best and you put them together, and they, they're sort of shaped the same, and they're, and they, their body frame and everything. It would just, I just think it'd be a really well evenly matched up fight. Did you hear about when they were speaking, talking about another super, because that was the two super, super fights they were talking about. It was Anderson Silva going up against John Jones, and one of the other super fights they were talking about was Anderson Silva going up against George St. Pierre. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought that was going to happen before this be last one. one so. yeah. I mean, yeah. You're talking about two of the most popular fighters out there, and even John Jones being the light heavyweight champion is still not as popular as George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva. They were talking about... Long. You know, they, 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 you get, like, Jones came up fast, and, I mean, he is incredible to watch. But, you know, those guys are seasoned veterans. They've been in, in it for a long time. So I think that's why their popularity is a little, little higher. Absolutely. And then the, with that fight with the both of them, they were talking about bringing that to Texas in the Dallas Stadium. I mean, that's how big that fight would have been, and that would have had some amazing undercard fights. Oh, that, yeah, that, that would have been huge. 
The only thing I think it, it, why I wasn't too intrigued by that fight was because I thought George St. Pierre was just a little, it was just a little reach for Anderson Silva. I like the Anderson Silva John Jones fight a, little, a lot better personally. They're, I think they're a little more evenly matched because their frame is almost exactly the same. I mean, they just have a reach on them for days. But, um, I mean, St. Pierre, I w- that would still be another great fight. It would be. I'd, I'd still love to see it. Um, do you guys follow the Ultimate Fighter Show at all that's on FX every Tuesday night at 9 p.m.? I, I have this season. I never had before. And I was like, you know what, I really want to get into this this time because, you know, and it's great because you get to see, you know, from the ground up, you get to see the inside of it, how hard they train. You, you know, you don't get to see that, you know, when you just watch the regular fights, you know. So it's really it's really been interesting. Right <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we got to um, – is that uh, Ronda fight. Rousey and uh, Misha Tate fighting again? That was phenomenal. Like, I had no idea what to expect from that last fight. The, the, the woman. Yeah, the oh, my fight, God. Man. It was great. Yeah. We were like, dude, we didn't expect them to throw blood. Like, they were brawling. That was a hell of a fight. Yeah. You know what's crazy, too, is that these new these women fighters, they're pretty hot. Like what, it, it's, it totally defies everything you thought of as a, as a girl fighter when you were growing up. You think they're going to look like Tank Abbott. <laughs> I mean, you think they're just going to come in there and just be these big old bruisers. Because if you're a, an attractive girl, you don't think you want to get in there and get your face pounded in by another one. But, yeah. So you guys, you, were, you guys watched UFC 157 and saw the Kamush fight with uh, Ronda Rousey. And... There was a point in that fight when it was like, oh, my God, it could be. Fight. I, that could have been anyone's fight. It was, it was amazing. I had no idea. I thought she was going to choke her out when she's on her back. She, but it looked like she was going to pop her head off, but she made it through it. And that was crazy. She got that arm bar, didn't she? She won with the arm bar? Yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. She saw how strong but, she was. Just, oh, my God. But prior to that, the, the other one, remember when she's on her back, yeah. twisting her head yeah. sideways? I mean, ugh. these girls could – beat us down i mean there's i mean that's like i said it's a different level to be a fighter like that so you think dana made a good move by adding the women's division into the ufc and you guys enjoy watching uh the women fight now yeah in all honesty i really didn't know what to expect it's like women's football league like i really don't care you know but then when we watched the fight we're like oh man this is like this is good this is legit so yeah yeah what was great is that the card right before i was that was hyped up about that already so i'm like you know it was uh who was it I was gonna do the, yes yeah. and i was like oh this is gonna be a great fight and it was boring it was, they didn't really fight each other at all you know you know you made a good point there because dana white a lot of people the criticism of bringing the women's division over and it was a historical fight card because of the inception of the new women's division was that why would he headline that card with the women, and it was their first fight, and it was also both of those fighters' first time in the UFC. And then Dana White turned around and said, could you imagine if the main event had been Dan Henderson, Leota Machida, what you guys would have said then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I was bored. highly <laughs> disappointed, and they're both great fighters. But it was just seemed like they were never, they would never connect. They just were running around in circles until somebody won. And then we were like, man, okay, we'll go ahead and watch the girl fight. And we watched it, we're like, dude, this smokes that last card. So. I actually thought Machida fought really good, and, like, he's really hard to hit. But what I didn't like was that Henderson was obviously far behind, and he just stood there and did nothing about it. And that's kind of was, was disappointing, you know, and it was just like, well, you know, do something. You know, you're going to lose. <laughs> yeah. I think the problem is they played. They were both playing it safe, so it's two, different, two, two safe, two different styles, and I don't think Dan Henderson was engaging enough. So, And he, he, he pressing the fight as he usually yeah. does. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't lead it. He, that's that's his usually his fighting style is to press it and really come in and charge. And they were playing it too safe. And that's it. Just doesn't make for a good fight. I remember a while back. I can't remember what fight it was. The one of the ones where Silva. It was it was close, but he was it was just really. I remember Dana saying in interviews that it was just, he was just really boring. And there was like they had you know Dana and Silva had beef there for a little bit. And it was because he said he was just playing it too safe and being boring in there and. Uh, and then he came back and ripped people's heads off. The <laughs> yeah. right. So for predictions for the ultimate fighter. So you enjoy watching the show, uh, of course. Then eventually Chael Sonnen and John Jones are going to fight. Any predictions on, the, on that fight? I think that's happening in April in uh, New Jersey. Any thoughts on that fight coming up? I think Sonnen doesn't stand a chance, to be honest. I don't know. I, I think, think Sonnen's a, uh, he's a, a great hype man. He talks be- better smack than anyone. I mean, just like... The last fight that he had a all uh, 
hyped up with Silva. I mean, you were like, man, this guy might have a chance. And he wasn't a bad, horrible fight, but he still he got beat up pretty good. And, I mean, once again, anything can happen. You never know what can happen. But I don't, I'm, I'm on the Jones side of it for sure. I think maybe part of me wants him to get beat because I like Jones and he's just kind of cocky. And, yeah, yeah, he runs his mouth. Just, but yeah. that's, that makes for good television, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, like anything else, you know. Before I let you guys go, is there anything you want to pimp out there, Facebook, Twitter, website, t- anything you want to tell the fans? Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, you could follow us on uh, Twitter and um, all the social media outlets and just see where we're at. Um, we'll be back out on tour um, starting back up in mid-May and probably do another run. So if we're somewhere near you, yeah, come check us out. I think it's all, everything's 10 years music. It's 10 years music.com. It's Facebook's 10 years music. Yeah, I think everything is 10 years music. So. Yeah. Oh, and a little hint if Fedor's listening, they're going to Russia soon. So go check out 10 years, guys. I mean, yeah. come on. And I suggest everybody out there go catch a local show. These guys sound great. Go look at their videos. As a matter of fact, I am stoked because I hope at least I have tickets for tonight's show. I mean, uh, am I hooked up here or what? We'll see. Nah, yeah, you're good. You'll make it happen. We got to fight. Ready? Okay. <laughs> That's gonna. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. This is Billy Mira on UFC Radio signing off with the guys in ten years. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Take care. See ya.